Game number three on this Friday here from Jackson, Mississippi, as we are back here on HBC or League Pass Plus. More women's basketball coming up. It'll be Dillard and Wiley getting ready to go. This will be a good one in our uh, penultimate Friday game. We're back to 2023 Hope Credit Union Gulf Coast Athletic Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Championship presented by Hank Aaron Sports Academy. Columbine Coffee and brought to you by Urban Edge Network, HBCU League Pass Plus. We are back. Corey Hodges, Gabriel Shry, our entire team here with you. And we get set for Dillard and Wiley, women's basketball. Two teams that enter ready to make something happen. A loss and a win in their respective season finales. You see a look again at our bracket. Philander Smith got Tougaloo earlier in our first game out. Women's basketball. Dillard and Fist. That was an upset as Fist beat Dillard in men's basketball. Women on the left, men on the right. Now you go bottom left and Wiley and Dillard ready to rock with Wiley coming in six wins better than Dillard. So Gabe, we're ready to go. We continue to fill out our bracket and continue to advance. Four more games tomorrow. And finally, we get to Championship Sunday, but a whole lot of work to do before then. Absolutely. This is going to be a, a fantastic matchup. Wiley all the way up from Texas and the Wildcats, led by head coach Joe Flugler. They finished 8-6 and six in conference play and grabbed the number four seed heading into this tournament. They finished with an overall record of 13-11 and 11 after a 72-62 victory over Philander Smith to end the regular season. Thiralea Presley was awarded the GCAC Women's Basketball Player of the Week honors just last week. She scored a career-high 26 points and hit a career-high six three-pointers. She shot eight for 13 from the field and six for nine from three-point territory. Presley also contributed seven boards, two blocks, an assist, and a steal. So Wiley is going to be probably looking to her quite a bit here today. The junior from Akron, Ohio, has been fantastic this season, averaging over 10 points per game all year long. Yeah, and this is a Wiley team that has plenty of experience. When you look at their interim coach, and that's Amanda Wilson, and we will touch more on uh, Wilson as we go, but here's someone who has probably the rarest of rare things, especially in the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, and that is she has WNBA playing experience. You know, she was a fourth-round draft pick. She played for the Phoenix Mercury, you know, and she actually still plays basketball uh, down around uh, in Texas there at Wiley College. So talk about somebody with actual experience, the, uh, the person you really want as your mentor, as your coach, and there is Wiley, a closer look at head coach Amanda Wilson's team, but... This matchup, the women's basketball games have been exciting so far. Philander Smith kind of had that, that opening game in control against Tougaloo, although even Tougaloo made a bit of a charge as we went along, but still pretty good. We're back. Moment of silence there, so we wanted to duck out as well. But Dillard and Wiley splitting their regular season meetings, uh, Gabe. You know, it was 52-48 on the road January 15th, and Wiley got a win. And then 71-56 when uh, they had the pod right here at Tougaloo. So the thing is, these two teams have already played once this season here at Tougaloo. So not only that's, – see, that's where the pod situation – plays a factor to where if you can play a couple games against the same opponent in a gym in a regular season pod well all of a sudden this is just like they played their last game against them here in Tougaloo it's the same situation except it is obviously the tournament it's not a regular season game yeah we talked about the record of this program already the Wildcats again 16 and 9 7 and 7 in conference play and coach Wilson obviously very happy with that, coming in with a good seeding here into the conference tournament. On the other side of that coin, Dillard University's Blue Devils are 10-17 and 17 on the year, 6-8 and eight in conference. And so, Roshan Ambrose and the Blue Devils coming in. They're the underdog here. The underdog has been the story of this tournament, including our last game here on HBCU League Pass Plus, where the Blue Devils were upset by Fisk University. Yeah, and that was a big upset. That was the upset of the tournament so far. And, of course, it poses the obvious question, will we see an upset here 
with right now Wiley. If you just take it on wins and losses, they're the favorite. And then Dillard at 10 and 17. I mean, obviously, as they always say, we're getting set to find out. But uh, certainly this Wiley team has uh, a couple of uh, a couple of Wiley veterans. Oh boy! Oh, oh, oh. oh boy! Oh, oh, oh. Hold on to your hat, Gabe. Um, <laughs> you know, it, but you mentioned them. I mean, you mentioned them first, and then I had the pun. But you touched on it first, and I just cleaned it up. But Diamond Hawthorne, Aaliyah Presley, uh, you know, Kasia Jackson, Caitlin Davis. I mean, you've got four players there averaging double figures, yeah. and that's what you want. And on the other side, you know, for Dillard. They've got two players to double figure, so averaging on the season, Ariana Hart and, and Taylor DeWitt. But we're looking to see if we have another possible upset. It's rare to get more than a couple in a tournament, but you never know. I would say every matchup other than this has been quite a dramatic power imbalance, and this on paper is a really, really close matchup. Um, obviously not seated very close, but the more you dig into the numbers, and even, even just the record alone, Really look at that record. So yeah, ten and seventeen overall does not sound nearly as good as sixteen and nine. <laughs> but the conference record, Wiley is seven and seven, and Dillard is six and eight. Yeah, they're very similar. Yeah, yeah. When you get, it, it's almost like looking at NAIA stats and sorting who's in the GCAC in the NAI stats, or just looking at GCAC stats. Then okay, are you going to compare them to everybody? There's a lot of NAIA schools yeah. in the United Couple States. Hundred. Couple hundred. So do you want to sort it by that, or do you want to be more fair and sort it you know, by just GCAC stats? And every conference could have that same conversation. But for me, I mean, I take the rule of if anyone's inside the top 50 in their overall conference, okay, that's that's good. And uh, I should say, if you're in the top 50 overall nationally, that's good. If you're top one or two in your conference. That's really good, too. Here's an air ball three. The uh, first shot of the afternoon put up by Davis is a miss three. Davis gets it back. We are 15 seconds in to Dillard and Wiley. Game three on a Friday of the 2023 GCAC. That's a turnover. It'll be Dillard ball. Nothing to lose here after holding them on that first possession. Works to Presley. Now Miles. Miles will get it. Driving, puts it up and off. Rebounded by Jordan Rowe. And that one lost right in front of the Dillard bench. That is another Wiley turnover. Two turnovers, back-to-back -back possessions to start this contest. The Blue Devils should capitalize on this possession. Trying some... To Somebody's trying to break the, the scoring here. We're about a, a minute and three in. Now that time, just a foul, and it will lead to free throws for Dillard and Taylor DeWitt, the 5'11 senior. She's out of Mansfield, Louisiana, and she's 73% on the year from the charity strike. Yeah. So she will go there now for a player averaging 11 points per game in the regular season. Gets that one to bound around and down. Dillard's leading rebounder at six rebounds per game is one Taylor DeWitt, who gets assistance on both free throws, but does get them both. And it's two zip, Dillard over Wiley, a uh, minute and 10 in. Jumper, not there. Missed by Jordan Rowe. Out of bounds. Stays down here with Wiley, the team from Texas. During that 45, 50 minute break, had a chance to talk with Wiley men's basketball head coach, Coach Flegler, as here's a breakaway and a lay-in for Ariana Hart. Four zip Dillard over Wiley, and that is a turnover. And now, in the early going, the same situation is back again. Wiley at 16 and 9, turning the ball over. What a beautiful steal right there by Hart. The senior just streaks in, grabs that one, takes up the floor, and puts it in with a kiss off the glass. Yeah. Coach Ambrose for Dillard is going to go over and wipe up some of the 
Sweat that was near the scorer's table. Now Wiley gets a turnover of their own. And that one's over top of the scorer's table. That's where, that's where Andrew Glover was pregame. Andrew Glover, the great SID at Wiley College. He helped me get the interview with uh, Coach Flegler. And that's where he was sitting. I don't know where he is now, but he's got these great game notes, too. He's one of the best. I have to say, shout out to Coach Ambrose for standing up and wiping up the floor. Yeah. How many Power 5 coaches are you going to see do that? No. Zip. <laughs> Not but enough. I don't want it. Maybe some. Maybe some. I just saw Jim Harbaugh clear a tree off the road on Twitter. <laughs> no way. Wow. Yeah. In the ice storm up there in Michigan. So, oh. I mean, you might, but shout out to Coach Ambrose. That's pretty cool. Yeah, good call. You're right. I mean, it just you know kind of goes to show kind of where everyone's head at. You know, it's like the... You know, the Basement Jack song, you know, where's your head at? Like, are you thinking, what are you thinking? Are you thinking all about yourself? Or are you worried about the health of your players and make sure the floor is dry? That's a turnover. Too high for the fingertips of Kaja Jackson. And the big story here early is turnovers for Wiley. <laughs> Here's Dillard. This is... G, and there's the three for Ariana Hart, and in a blink, it is a seven to nothing lead for Dillard over Wiley. Hart's been a big piece of this program since she arrived. The minor high school grad went to Meridian Community College before transferring to Wiley, and she has just been electric all season long. 40% from the floor. About three and a half steals a game, really big turnover creator, and she averages about 12 points per game. Hearts three, making it seven to nothing. And Wiley struggling here to hold on to the basketball. They're still looking to get on the scoreboard, and they will continue their chance this time down the floor. That's Lusso, another turnover, picked up by Ariana Hart, who just hit that three. Here goes Hart, who got fouled. Two and a half minutes into this one, it's all Blue Devils to this point, 7-0. Wiley with some turnover trouble, which for a team that has the performances that they've had so far this season to lead them to 16-9, and for a 16-9 and team, they turn the ball over a bunch. 8-0, and... Here's Ariana Hart trying to make it 9 nothing. She does, but, you know, the, uh, as a, you know, like the old newscasters, and now this, but, you know, and, that, I, and I should say it myself, and now this. Here's the turnover number for Wiley. I mean, <laughs> they haven't had, <laughs> they've had at least about 11 turnovers in every game this season, and they're coming in three of the, Final three of the regular season, Wiley turned it over 24 times, 18 times, 25 times. I'm going to need some wine because you're really cheesy with the puns. This Very game. cheesy, yeah. <laughs> that 50-minute break when, uh, when you went to Best Buy energized me. <laughs> Where did you go while I, I was gone? I went, in the e <laughs> I went in the e sports room and I energized myself. I was like, I'm ready to go. It's, <laughs> speaking of energy, 11 to nothing, Dillard. I mean, this is not only – Okay, now, Gabe, it's gotten to the point to where we were joking about little upsets early, like, you know, the first couple minutes. This is 11 nothing for a team that, that is kind of the underdog. <laughs> Wiley hasn't scored yet. <laughs> Definitely seeded lower. Uh, we, yeah. we thought this might be a close game for sure mathematically. It's not been a close game. It's gone the opposite direction of the seeding and kind of what we expected. That's right. 11 nothing. Here comes Wiley. They're still looking to get on the board. We're almost four minutes into the opening quarter. Feed, turnover. And now it kicks its way back. Good hustle there to shovel that ahead from Taylor DeWitt, who was down on the floor. Consequently, here's Jordan Rowe. And Rowe is going to be fouled by Caitlin Davis of Wiley. Jordan Rowe, the sophomore from Kansas City right there, trying to get down inside. One of the leading scorers to this team. She could have got some space. Yeah. Yeah. 
second effort almost. Bought a basket plus the foul for DeWitt who claps her hands afterwards and she's going to the line trying to make it a 12, possibly 13 nothing start over Wiley. And the numbers stand out too. In the first two matchups of the season, Gabe, here you go, here's your turnovers. 33 turnovers for Wiley, first meeting at Dillard, and then 21 turnovers the next time. So 54 combined turnovers in two regular season games against Dillard. And here's Wiley, the same thing's happening. And it's 12 nothing. That's a lot of turnovers. That's a lot of turnovers, 33 turnovers. In fact, those 33, unfortunately for Wiley, were not even their season high. They had a season high 40 turnovers against Oakwood on January the 13th, 40. And this is not to, to bash Wiley. This is just to illustrate that it's a team that turns it over a lot. Yeah, 40 turnovers in the game is a lot, but they won 16 games. But they have not scored yet, and now it's getting a little discouraging. This is 13 straight points for Dillard. I uh, got a foul. That's on Dillard and Cockrell. You're asking me in the last broadcast, when do you start? Well, you've asked it a couple of times, but it's a good point every time you bring it up. When do you start panicking? 13 nothing. This gets to about 17, 18 nothing. That's that's panic. Almost lost an official in you right there. I know, right? Got my reflexes back. <laughs> Trying to. Yep. Yep. It's almost a steal. Yeah, I think you make a good point about the panicking. You know, still a long way from that. Yeah. But a couple of missed, you know, two or three more steals. Mm. You get to 18, 20 to nothing. That's right. I mean, you, you have at some point that that differential is so big. You're going to need some crazy runs. Hey, that's what I, exactly. That's that's the entire point right there. Missing his heart, pushed it up there, one-handed, and goes out of bounds. It is a turnover, and here's Wiley Jackson to Hawthorne, and Wiley's on the board. That's big time to get the lid off the basket. They needed that. You know, four minutes, 45 seconds in to this game, and Wiley finally scores. Here is an open three that almost got wedged. Missed that time by Alexis G. 13-2. And Dillard is into it, encouraging Ariana Hart with her defense. Hawthorne, who just scored for Wiley. She got bumped into. Hart comes up with the loose ball. Hart slings it over to Rowe. Pull. DeWitt got Beautiful it. the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Senior from Mansfield, Louisiana, right there, showing out. Looking great. 15 to 2. I didn't think that pull up was going to go, but DeWitt made me a believer. Jackson smothered by Rowe, but Jackson gets the two points anyway. 15-4 again, and here goes Taylor DeWitt. Lays it in, 17-4. And yes, Wiley scored a couple times, but they're still down 13. Three-pointer. Nope, Presley missed it. Hart turns, shovels, Presley, jumper. G tracks it down, throws it in. Somehow Ariana Hart got to it. Thought that was going to be an automatic turnover, but Hart was there to at least clutch it. Here it is again, G throwing it, and somehow Hart got it, and, and subsequently she got fouled. So 331 left in this first quarter. It is 17 to four. Dillard over Wiley. Dillard, a team that only won 10 games in the regular season, Wiley 16. And so far it's Dillard with a big early lead. That's part of it on HBCU 
League Pass Plus. and is Detective Stabler. My gut feeling is this is the tip of the iceberg. With Dillard on top. <laughs> Kirsten Harris. Miles. Miles gets it back. Clicks it to Harris. Who flings it to Caitlin Davis. Five on the shot clock. Good defense here for Dillard. Now Jackson. Shot clock sounds and that's it. A full 30 forced that time by Dillard defensively. Dillard up by the 13 and Alexis G will bring it up. I just feel like Wiley is still on the precipice of danger. The Wildcats got to get a few buckets here. 17 to 4. It, it illustrates your point perfectly to where it was 13, you know, 13 nothing. And yes, finally Wiley scored a couple baskets, but then Dillard responded, so the deficit's still 13. Now G just had that one taken away. And now G, if nothing else, she's still at least pestering Harris, who brings it up now. Davis, baseline, that went off the side of the backboard from Jackson, but she did get fouled, so it doesn't really matter what the shot looked like. Her and Ariana Hart, who has nine points, have scored all of the points for Dillard. Right. And it's focused on those two. Gosh. And also a fruitless trip a second ago down there for Jackson, who missed both. So it's still 17 to four, which it was before we got our most recent stat update. Here comes Wiley up now with Harris in the front court. Davis. Camacho was there to rescue it. Now Miles. This is a deep three from Caitlin Davis. Ten point game. That's big time by Davis cutting into that 13 point lead, making it a 10 point ball game again with 90 seconds left in this first frame. Yeah, Davis, she attempts about five. With under 90 seconds to go in the first. G, tough one. She just kept going, she kept bouncing. 19 7, maybe that three gets Wiley going here. It's Harris. Miles just kind of tapping it back to herself with one hand. Miles gets it back. Now the jumper. That's for three. In and out. Rebound secured for Dillard by McZeal. Out of bounds. That's a Dillard turnover. And so Wiley will come back in a now 19-7 game. Davis, Tamia Dolls, air on the three, but it's rescued underneath and put in by Diamond Hawthorne. Good play by Hawthorne, bailing out Dolls right there. The freshman, she had a good look. She had to take that, but the junior from El Dorado grabs that one, puts it home. Yeah, that was great. You just underneath the basket, you clean that up, and put it back. You get two points, even though it was an air ball three. Great defensive pressure here from Presley all over Diaz. Diaz got a lot of heat going. McZeal. Now out to Rowe, who is pressured. One on the shot clock. Shot clock violation. Wiley 
forces a full 30 from Dillard. A second left in the first. That's Wiley turning it up and trying to find the energy. Between that three and that shot clock violation, I think now Wiley's right back in this game. Look at that fling. Yeah. Not a bad effort there from Caitlin Davis. Look. Not bad. I mean, you know, an extra foot maybe. 19-9 is the lead for Dillard over Wiley. An upset early, but Wiley has life. Check. May get Alex Williams involved tomorrow, or possibly Sunday for some interviews. Faith Daniels may be back to do some interviews. And there she is. There's Alex. Perfect. So that will be fun. Looking forward to that, to adding to our team. That's Dania McZeal, who hit the three. So it's 22-19, Dillard, a three to answer some of that wily run. Here's Caitlin Davis. Jumper, got it. And that's Kaja Jackson. 22-11, Dillard doubling up Wiley. Here's Ariana Hart. Ball's loose and now to the floor for Wiley. Hart still leading Dillard in scoring with her nine. One point behind DeWitt as Gabe mentioned earlier. Hawthorne with four points for Wiley. Three. Minute 10 into the second. Things were a lot different first five minutes or so of the first. Three. There it is for Aaliyah Presley for Wiley. And it is a single digit game, 22-14. After Dillard outscored Wiley 19-9 in the first quarter. 5-3 run for Wiley. That's right, now we got a ball game. Eight yeah. point contest here. Wiley is in this again. There's a three that was forced up by reacting as well. Got fouled from down there. That's Caitlin Davis. So Presley just hit a three. Davis is going to go to the free throw. Probably going to get fouled anyway, but that's especially noticeable. First of three from Davis is good. A 73% free throw shooter. Davis, who was one of two Wiley players in the regular season who attempted at least 100 free throws. Davis attempted 111. Diamond Hawthorne attempted 114. She got both, 22-17. Turning. Good move. No basket. Loose. Who's got it? It's Wiley, finally, with Caitlin Davis. Look at Davis split oh them and lay it boy. in. Here come the Wildcats, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Now they're looking like 16 wins. McZeal. Tapped around. Turnover. Let's go. Here comes Wiley. Tamiya Dolls in the front court. Dolls up, just off. Up for grabs. Dillard has it. Rebound secured by Asia Dawson. Dawson. Got it back. Dawson. No foul. Everything's clean. Presley with the rebound. Wiley is up there in a hurry, and that's Presley who tried to go coast to coast. Cockrell has it, and we've got a foul, and then the and one opportunity coming up with a free throw. Foul will go on Wiley's Tamiya Dolls. Throw, still got her two points, but... Doesn't get the N one play. 24-19, five-point game. With three, four thousand dollars. I'm five thousand dollars in debt, which I've been before. Um, okay, I can't just keep five thousand dollars and pay my debt off. I got to pay everything else, and it's the same way here. 
you can make inroads if you're Wiley, but you get you were in you were in debt 13 to nothing. So, you know, everybody wants to pay off their debt these days. I get that. It's the same situation. How do you pay off the deficit debt to start? DeWitt scores it because see now it's it's back up to nine and and Wiley, yeah, they're closer. They're not down 13 nothing anymore, but and now Dillard's going to get a steal as well. Here comes Jordan Rowe to McZeal, to G, and almost. If, if G had scored that, that would have been a great three-woman play that time for the Dillard Blue Devils, B-L-E-U. Another look at that. Last one down inside right there. What a beautiful bucket right off the glass. Mm -hmm. and here's on the other end. But I asked him the same thing about Texas. Of course, that's Joseph Flegler for Wiley Men's Basketball. Andrew Glover helped to set up that interview in the Tougaloo College eSports gaming room and asked him about it. You know, it's, it's really cool to be able to represent the state of Texas. Both programs feel that way. Up quickly to Dillard's row, who lost her footing. We're not as far from Texas here as, you know, out on the East Coast. I'm sure you see a lot of Texas colleges and universities. It's like, oh, that's a 14-hour drive or, you know, however many hour flight. Yeah. We're only three and a half hours from Wiley College here. Uh, exactly. I know that's the thing about it is that the GCAC can incorporate all these different states because you think, like, how in the world could Arkansas and Texas be close to, you know, New Orleans or, or Mississippi? But they are. They're, they're only a couple hours away. Yeah, got someone tied up here for 10 point game. Under two to play uh, before halftime. G drives, no. Miles. Hawthorne, 95 seconds left before halftime. Caitlin Davis, she got there, met a wall in Taylor DeWitt. Well, that was it. And now a bad pass that bounced off of Davis. Another unforced turnover. Big turnover in a 10-point ball game with 70 seconds left to go in the first half. Yeah, that little stuff adds up. There's DeWitt who got fouled by Aaliyah Presley. Non-shooting foul, though. Out to DeWitt. That's a travel on Dania McZeal. Presley. Good cut, finish, and it's an and one play for Jalen Miles. Miles doesn't get the free throw to go, only a 63% free throw percentage in the regular season, but does cut this down to a eight point game. Deficit for Wiley. That's a foul. And it's, you know, like that Norman Brown song, it keeps coming back. You know, it, we keep coming back to to thirteen nothing deficit. <laughs> One of the best smooth jazz guitarists of all time. You, whenever you get stressed out, you got to put on Norman Brown. Here's a three from the top. Beautiful. Got it. Beautiful. Caitlin Davis with that three point shot from the top. Caught it. Shot it. Scored it. That's the closest it's been in the last seven minutes. Yeah, that's it, man. Five-point game. <laughs> Two seconds to go here. McZeal. Yeah, right move to get it in there to DeWitt. But following this three-point shot, it is a five-point game, 31-26 at halftime. Dillard had a 13-0 lead over Wiley, but Wiley is within five. Gabe, as we've hit Dillard led by Ariana Hart and Taylor DeWitt with 9 and 14 respectively. Both teams doing very well shooting from the floor. 10 for 28 of the Wildcats and 11 for 29 of the Blue Devils. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's the story right now. And rebounds in you know, 20 to 14, so a six board difference for uh, Wiley over Dillard. And 30 seconds in, and almost an and one play. And Dillard's Cockrell knows how close she was to getting that. And one basket to fall. Now she's got to, got to go to the free throw line and work for her two. Got that one. 32-26. And Paco, she was upset. She couldn't get it to go. And... Had to go to the line to get them, but she looked great on those two. Tough catch right there for Caitlin Davis, who's still pestered. She got double teamed as well. Presley. And that's a foul on Wiley. And fouled in the process was Ariana Hart. The Dillard. There she is, Hart, who had nine in the first two quarters. Five-point differential at the halftime break. They have a chance to cut it back to that right here at the line. The largest of the game was obviously that 13-point differential yeah. at the end of the run. And it was an 11-point game at the end of period number one. So able to cut that to five points at the half could be a sign of a trend for the Wildcats. Yeah. What you can't do is have another big run here for Dillard to start the third. I mean, that hasn't happened yet, of course, but... It, this game, probably more than any game we've seen so far, is truly going to come down to scoring without the without the game clock moving, getting steals off turnovers, making sure you're rebounding, no second chance points, all the typical coach stuff, but it's true. Putting that one up was Cockrell. She got a bump, thought maybe there would be a whistle. There wasn't. And now here's Tamia Dolls, who hurt her defender behind her, and Dolls, as soon as she knew she was clear, she just put on the Jets and scored. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Chance there over that media timeout break to have a shot to talk things over. The Wildcats and the Blue Devils here. Women's basketball action in the still opening round of the GCAC Men's and Women's Basketball Championship. Hope Credit Union, Hank Aaron Sports Academy, Columbine Coffee, Urban Edge Network. And of course we are here, everybody, on HBCU League Pass Plus. To inbound comes Caitlin Davis. And Dolls will bring it up. She was the last to score before that media break. Dolls finds Presley. Quick feed to Hawthorne. Presley tried for it, went up, couldn't grab it. Turnover. Seventeen turnovers for Wiley in that first half. So on pace for 30 plus, obviously, which would be another game of a lot of turnovers for Wiley. But we did mention that point earlier, how that's not the craziest thing in the world. It's kind of what, but first before that, coming back in comes Kirsten Harris. Fouled, high catch for DeWitt, turned around facing the basket and got hit. Yeah, that was a great entry pass. She was able to hang on to that. And I think Miles made the right play right there. I don't think you want to take it easy on the contest. Right. You, know, you don't want to risk her getting that easy basket. Foul yeah, you left with foul. not much of a choice there. Now, you send, obviously, DeWitt here to the free throw line. This first ever three game and a chance to tie it at the line. Foul is up number 22, Jordan Rowe. Take a personal, take a team foul. Take the Jackson at the line for Lynn Wiley. 
Short. Galen Miles went down. He would be in that position next time down. Here's G. It will stay with Dillard. Rowe. DeWitt hands off to McZeal. McZeal for three for Dillard, too much. Tapped around, DeWitt trying to keep it alive. And that's a foul on Wiley. It'll go on Wiley's mini Miller, who is their, I'm talking about Wiley, their leading rebounder this season. Well, McZeal pulled up for that three, and she knew what she was doing. She was trying to put that lead out of reach of Wiley even for just a few more minutes because that momentum clearly very important for this game plan. That's right. Thirty-eight, thirty-six. another free throw and make it a three-point game for Dillard. Under five to play in the third. Harris. Jackson. Got it. Down the basket for number 23, Kaja Jackson. So Kaja Jackson shot. One point game again. Now Wiley presses a bit. Now they let everybody get back up into the front court. And here comes Z. G driving almost. A three-point play opportunity. Alexis G will go to the free throw line out of Garland, Texas. Timeout. Four and a half to go. Media needs a break to print off new sheets. 39-38. Dillard leads, but just by one with four and a half to play here on HBCU. League Pass Plus will come back since 30 seconds into this game. <laughs> this is where we're at. A three gets Wiley their first lead of the game. This could be it right there. No, too much. Wiley can still tie. Instead, it's just a turnover right into the hands of Jordan Rowe. The shortest it came after that first period was at the halftime break. It was a five-point ball game. Kind of extended out a little bit again to begin the third period, and now it's shored up. At one point, it was a one-point lead for Dillard. Well, Wiley's going to have another chance here. Now we Yeah, Davis will get another. She could tie the game at the line on a literally, literally a technicality. Tie game. Well, first tie of the ball game. There you go on that on whatever Sidney John Baptiste did a moment ago after that play. I'm not sure what it was, but. I don't know either. Yeah, I missed it. It's Wiley Ball, of course. You get the technical and you get possession. So here's Jackson. So this could be it. Davis. Jackson. Finds a cutter, and Wiley, courtesy of Diamond Hawthorne, has their first lead of the game. At one point, they've trailed 13 to zip. Mark it down. That's like when, when Jim Nant said when Tiger Woods took the lead in the 97 Masters. Like, mark it down. It's 5.30 on a Friday. Tiger Woods leads the Masters. It is uh, 6.22 on a Friday, and Wiley leads their game against Dillard. 6.22, Friday, got it. Got it, perfect. <laughs> Mark it down, just, yeah. <laughs> two shots. 
coming up for Taylor DeWitt. 19 total points. But if she gets another rebound, it would be her first double-double of the season. She's been really close a handful of times, but Taylor DeWitt hasn't had a double-double yet. Second tie of the ball game. Yeah. And now it will be Dillard ball. Dillard thought that G was fouled. She just lost it. Sometimes you get a whistle, sometimes you don't. Harris. Kick. Hawthorne. Finds Minnie Miller. Hawthorne the rebound. Hawthorne got fouled. Wildcats just trying to nurse and extend that, that lead they had a moment ago. Get out of this rut where they're tied up 42 all. Dillard obviously trying to get back into the driver's seat and they were for so long in this game. Yeah. They want to be back in that position to have a double digit lead but things have pretty much changed now to where that may be almost be impossible. Have to go on another run. Like they did at the start. Now Wiley for just the second time in this game has another lead. 44-42, Dillard has to overcome the press. Jordan Rowe, DeWitt. Asia Dawson. Just over two to play in the third. Sydney John Baptiste went down and yep. Yep, that's an ankle injury. She came down on that ankle and that is not good at all. You see, that's what you don't want, but it's going to swell. And it could be quite the next 24, 36 hours for her. Uh, a, a pretty important piece for Dillard, so something to watch, but at least she's off the floor. Hopefully she's all right. You never want to see that at uh -uh. any level. And no. You just hate to see it. There's you not do. much more to say than that. Yeah, because we've all done it ourselves. Either we sprain it or we twist it. I've never broken it, but I've been really close twice, and you know how painful that is. Plus, you got everybody in here watching you. There's pressure there, too, because you, you, you want to go into a private space when that happens. You got everybody here. You want to get up for everybody else. It's a, yeah, it's a, an enviable position. Dawson missed on the three. Harris coming back. Bounce. Finds Hawthorne who lays it in. 46-42. Now, this is the classic Will the near injury, and it pretty much was an injury, will it affect Dillard and their mind, or will they get motivated by that? Because sometimes that shakes the whole morale of the team. Now look at that, missed jumper. But it's cleaned up and put back in. That's kind of important right now. Cockrell lays it in, 46-44. Dillard's got to shake that off. They're still working on John Baptiste down there on the Dillard bench. They're testing out the ankle and moving it in different directions and the medical trainer trying to gauge how it feels. So far from the reaction that John Baptiste had, she's been okay with every direction that ankle's moving. So hopefully that keeps up. Shot clock's off. Taylor DeWitt got it. 46 all at the end of the third. Dillard ties it back up with the fourth quarter on the way next. Taylor DeWitt only had about three seconds to do this on HBC League Pass Plus. Suddenly it is because Dillard, like you said, had a lead for so long. Now it's finally flashed around a couple of times, but both teams now completely in this. Now it's it's not favoring one or the other. That was a great entry pass. Just couldn't capitalize yeah. on that one. A 
with a double-double we mentioned from Taylor DeWitt. Still hasn't materialized yet. It's 21 to nine. So it's not there yet. Flipping it up and almost in from Davis. Here comes Dillard. Jumper by DeWitt. She closed the third with the score. Hart battling. Wiley denies Dillard. Davis, Presley, and now Tamia Dahl's going to get Hawthorne, who gets pressured, and then somebody lost somebody. Presley, unadulterated along the baseline, scores. Great bucket right there, and again, like we've been talking about, the Wildcats preserve that lead. There has not been a lead change since that only one in the game, they got on top and they're going back and forth right now. Three ties in the last few minutes. Yeah, now it's trying to find separation again if you're Dillard, but it's not going to be what it was when it was 13-0, obviously. It's been a long time ago. McZeal. McZeal tried to funnel that in and it got knocked away. I've got another trend for you. So it was an 11 point differential at the end of the first. At the halftime break, it was a five point ball game. <laughs> at the beginning of the fourth, it was a tie. Yeah. <laughs> About five, six point swing. Mm -hmm. Each period in favor of the Wildcats. That's it. It will be Wiley Ball. And Tamia Dawes into front court. Dawes with four points. Yeah. And you pointed it out there, Gabe. And John Baptiste is lacing up and she's standing up. Love to see that. Love it. Really happy to yeah. see that. And at least she's walking and she's she's favoring one still, but it's not what it was. That's a hard, hard My fall. Goodness. Presley went straight down. And she's back up, though, but that's one of those that just kind of, if you're lucky, it doesn't knock the wind out of you. But if you land the wrong way, then she gets back up here and she hustles back efficiently. So this game's been physical between John Baptiste and then Presley. This has been a physical game. My Davis. Davis turns. Davis lost it. Out of bounds. It will stay with Wiley. I finally did it. I finally sneezed, Gabe. <laughs> I made a fall. Got gotcha. <laughs> he got it. That time of year. It never happens. 51-50. One point ball game under three to go. Dillard seeking to regather the lead. They led for most of this contest. Davis. Now Harris with two and a half to play. And Wiley leading by a point wants to work clock, obviously. Jumper, there it is for Kaja Jackson. Three-point ball game with just over two minutes left to go. It's kind of entering clutch time here for the Blue Devils. They can take their time, though. They can get a few more possessions. There's DeWitt. Oh, no, check that. That's scored by Cockrell. My bad. Cockrell with the two points, 53-52. Timeout, Wiley in a one-point game. A minute 50 to go. We will have the conclusion next. HBCU lead pass. 
plus coming back after this to Mississippi. The offensive foul. Inbound to Hart. Now she gets doubled by Davis and Presley, but Hart works her way in. She got fouled and almost scored the basket too, but she can go to the line and either tie or retake the lead for Dillard. Big opportunity for her right here, generated off of that play that you just saw. Drove down inside, fouled. And she went through the paint, tried to put it up and in, just couldn't pull it off as she was fouled. Well in motion. Yeah. That's our fifth tie of the ball game. <laughs> a lot of them happened after Wiley took the lead. Then teams kind of went windshield wiper. Hart has 11. That's our second lead change. That's right. 54-53. Under a minute. Tamia Dolls. Davis, nine on the shot clock. Davis kind of looked over as if she was going to pass, then lost it. Hart tried to save it. Ball bounces around, up for grabs. Hart's on it. Quick feet ahead. The layup to give Dylan wow. a three-point game, and that's McZeal. 56-53, Dillard with 31 seconds left. That's big time. Coming in late, coming in clutch. Take another look at that one. Great pass up the floor, all alone. She puts it in, little kiss off the glass, and finds the twine. Yeah, that was just get that ahead, make that pass, make it happen. And it's just all forward thinking that time for Ariana Hart, the senior, and that's a senior for sure with that court vision. Up ahead, I've got someone in front of me. Facilitate, and let's get the lead back. And, and now we are again in the position of an upset. It would be our second straight upset. Fisk got the upset win last game out in men's basketball. And now Diller trying to do the same. 10 and 17 coming into this Friday in the GCAC championship. And and there's Wiley at 16 and nine. So that could be the big change. We could have our second straight upset. We're, we're about 30 seconds away from it. Absolutely wild situation Woo. for these two programs to be in. It's been a lot of fun to be here on the call with you for this one, Corey. Sure. And it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. I, I really feel like Dillard has it in them. They have to dig deep here because, you know, the Wildcats are going to let it all hang out here in this last few seconds. Yeah, this is where if you want to keep your season going, then you have to win. And, and, you know, it's not the regular season. It's obviously the GCAC tournament win to stay alive. Only a three-second difference game and shot clock. Stolen, what a time by Hart who lays it in and Dillard leads by five. Ariana Hart has done everything and that one almost poked away and almost another steal. 10 seconds left, what's going on? Forcing that shot up with 10 seconds left, that was Davis. They've done it. Dillard, a shot clock violation, there's still one second left.